Hello everyone! So around this time of year I like to do some romance videos because as we all know I'm very seasonal. Nothing's different there. So today I'm going to share some swoon worthy books and what swoon worthy means to me is they're just they make you want to swoon like you know those gifs where the lady's like oh like you know it's just so romantic you just can't take it. We're going to talk about those. So I have talked a lot about romance books on my channel, especially last year and this year going on. So I'm going to try not to talk about books that I've talked about like a lot recently. Keyword try. So, you know, we're just going to go with it. These are the some romance books. That's right. Just some that just give you all of the swoon worthy feels that just encompass you with love. And they're just so romantic, so steamy, just like just everything. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it and let's get into it. First up is a recent read for me and that is The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai. This is the second book in her series The Marriage Game. I liked The Marriage Game when I read that last year but I really loved The Dating Game. So this book we follow a character named Daisy who is like a software engineer. She's ridiculously smart and she is Indian American and her family really wants her to get married and she feels the pressure from that constantly. And basically to summarize it she runs into her like her old high school crush named Liam who used to be her brother's like best friend and she has had a thing for him but she hates him now because he abandoned her at prom so many years ago. So a course of things happened and somehow they ended up somehow they end up becoming like fake engaged to help appease her family to help him get somewhere and of course you can guess where it's gonna go. It's got that kind of second chance romance because Daisy liked him for so long a friends to lovers thing. Also I hate the lovers because she like low him now but I really enjoyed it. The romance was so swoon worthy you could tell that both of them just really felt a lot for each other and it had some steamy scenes and it was just swoon worthy to perfection. We have another recent read The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. So this book follows a character oh my gosh I read on ebooks I forgot her name. I believe the guy's name is Dom but either way they both work at Seattle's like NPR. They're in National Public Radio and their company like where they work at in particular their branch is kind of going under so their boss is like we need some like better radio podcast ideas and the main character Shay I think that's her name comes up with the idea of this podcast or radio show called The X Talk where it features two exes and they just talk about the relationship how it ended and how they could still be friends and their boss is like great that's a great idea how about you and Dominic run it because you guys have this playful banter. Only problem is they've never dated before so they have to fake like they dated and broke up and things like that. Also Shay loathes Dom because he's like up and comer and he's gotten everything handed to him and this is just a great hate to love romance set in kind of the radio world in the Pacific Northwest and I loved it a ton. It's definitely gonna make you swoon because I don't know about you but my favorite romantic trope of all time is hate to love. Like I always say Give me a couple that like lose each other beginning of the book and it's just madly in love by the end and I am just happy as can be and this one was exactly that. It's gonna make you swoon a thousand times over. And of course we have the Brown Sister series by Talia Hibbert. Her third and final book is coming out in a couple months called At Your Age Evie Brown. I've read the first two. Love them both. Um, Get a Life Chloe Brown is kind of like um I wouldn't call it hate to love but it's just about two characters that don't really know each other and they kind of help each other on some things and of course they things happen. It was adorable and super super sweet and then take a hint Danny Brown is really friends to lovers. You have two friends that um, haven't they haven't had any romantic entanglements with each other but they do a fake dating thing so it's got friends to lovers and fake dating and of course they discover their feelings and both of them are just so swoon worthy so adorable like both of the characters both of the guys in each of these books were like just cinnamon rolls were just precious as can be I love any Talia Hibbert book the romance is just so adorable speaking of super cute romantic books pretty much what this whole video is how to feel it for by Denise Williams I have heard like no one talk about this book it was one of my favorite romances of last year it definitely came out under the radar I read it with a lot of I read it without a lot of expectations but I thoroughly enjoyed it this book we follow a character named Naya who it doesn't live life in the fast lane. She's very cautious and her friends really like you need to open up you need to do things. So she decides to like pick up a stranger at a bar and she does just that and it turns into something more and it's just a really 
wholesome, just a beautiful love story. Naya also deals with a lot of um, trauma from her past relationship because it was verbally abusive and she is trying to navigate that while falling in love with somebody else. And it's just a beautiful, swoon-worthy romantic read. Like there are books that I think like are super steamy and like super there and there are some romance books that are just so lovey and this is a lovey one and I just really loved it. Again, I haven't heard a ton of people talk about it. Likewise with Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting. I read this again last year with again zero expectations but came out to be one of my favorite romantic reads of the year and this one is all about a character named Blair who decides to open up this cupcake place that's like cupcake and booze. Sounds amazing. And another person next door named Ronan opens up like this bar that has like hatchet or axe throwing. I don't know. I still haven't done that yet. Really want to. Pretty much they just don't get along because they have rivaling companies and each of them wants to do good for their business. But of course, as all hate to love romances go, it's always hate and then love. And it was just, I don't know, I'm a sucker literally for any book that's like set in like a bakery or food atmosphere. I don't know what it is. I know I'm not alone in that but I love this because every chapter would start off with like a different cupcake flavor with booze in it and I was like this is just amazing. I really enjoyed it. It was super cute, steamy, and my favorite Helen Hunter book I've read for sure. Next up, another recent read is Accidentally Engaged by Farah Haran. So this is about a character named Raina who, whose parents really want her to find a good Muslim husband, but she really struggled with that. And basically her new neighbor ends up being this guy named Nadim, who she realizes her father is trying to get her to set up to marry. And she's like, no, but the more time she spends with Nadim, the more she's like, I might like this guy. And she's also a big fan of like baking bread. Like she loves baking bread. And so this food like competition comes up where it's only geared to like engaged or married people. So her and Nadim pretend to be fake engaged in order to be on this reality show. And you can guess what happens from there. It was super cute, not really steamy at all. So in case you're looking for that, this one's good for that. But it just was, I really enjoyed like them realizing that they really liked each other, but you know, with their parents' expectations, it was hard, but overall it was just so swoon-worthy, so sweet. Spoiler alert by Olivia Dade is so swoon-worthy. I read this again last year. Most of these are last year reads, hope that's okay. And this one follows a character, I forget her name, I am so sorry because I read it April. I think her name's April and she is um, a geologist and she's also a really big fangirl. She loves this TV show that's let's just say Game of Thrones mixed with Outlander and she just loves the show, the books, she's a big fan of them and she is also like online and writes fan fiction for this show and her best friend for fan fiction is this guy that she's never really met but lo and behold it's actually the main actor from the show and he's actually writing fan fiction under a pseudonym, things like that and they have feelings for each other online and then somehow through a crazy course of events they meet in real life and start dating and he knows that I forget his name. I'm so sorry. He realizes that that April is the girl he's been talking to online. Like that's his fan fiction best friend, but she doesn't know. But overall, it was just so swoon-worthy. It also has a plus size main character, which I really identify with, obviously. I love that. It was just so adorable. I love how much she talked about fandoms and just things like that. And I just ate it up like literal candy. Okay, Christina Lauren books. Of course I had to talk about that because I think Christina Lauren is a staple in the romance community. A lot of authors are, but I'm gonna give you two recommendations for a different mood you might be in because as a mood reader myself, it's hard to figure out what you want to read. So if you want like an epic sprawling love story, Love in Other Words is great for that. It's about two characters that fell in love when they were in high school. Something tragic happened that ripped them apart and they move on with their life. We pick up many years later with the main character named Macy who is now getting married to someone else but she runs into her old love, Elliot, and things happen. So obviously a second chance romance, very deep, very swoon worthy, but you know, it's got a lot of depth behind it. So if you want like a little bit of a cry with your romance, recommend it. But if you just want like a summary, hey, to love romance set in freaking Hawaii, The Unhoneymooners is right for you. So it follows Olive and Ethan who just basically end up having to go to Maui together and pretend to have to be a married couple and they hate each other and you can guess what happens. So two, you know, two things if you want like a little bit of like an epic love story with some tears involved. This one's great for that. If you want just a fun summer romance, 
this one is great for that as well. And the last book I want to talk about, I'm mentioning it last because I just started it. I think I'm going to love it, but I still want to talk about it. And that's First Comes Like by Alicia Rye. This is her third, I think, maybe final book in her Modern Love series. And this one's about a character named Gia who ends up getting into like this tiffed online with this Bollywood star. Things happen from there. I just started it. I'm really enjoying it. And I wouldn't be surprised if I love it because I loved her previous book, Girl Gone Viral, a ton. And yeah, I have high hopes for this one, but I still want to recommend it because I love Alicia Rye books and I think any one of them will do just depending on your mood for swooniness. But I think this was going to be a great one and I'm very excited to finish it. There you have it. Some swoon worthy books that to read in this month of, you know, bleakness, at least where I live, where it's like, winter and cold and blah that you know will just lift up your spirits and make you happy and swoon worthy and all of those things so I would love to hear what kind of romance books you've read recently that just made you you know swoon and that you would recommend to me please leave them in the comments because my list is always ever growing <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye mm.